Metal bass player Bones McGee, and our percussionist Victor Bobbitt. I'm joined today by award-winning chef and owner of Tucker Restaurant, Brian Wells, who's going to be cooking some salt water crocodile boards. Take it away, Brian. Alrighty, today, well, welcome to Tucker. Uh, today we're going to cook a seared soupy crocodile with a celeriac and fennel remoulade. And we're also going to be having a side of caramelised onion and air puree. So to start off with, the crocodile is going to take about an hour to cook, uh, and we're going to sous vide that, sous vide that. So it's going to uh, it's going to be sitting in a water uh, water bath, temperature control for about uh, for about an hour, uh, and we're going to cure it. So curing process usually takes a day, but we're going to show you how to cure it. Um, and but we've already got some pre-cured. So. What we're going to do to start off with is uh, we're going to do our, do our crocodile. So we've got a crocodile tenderloin. We've just taken the sinew off. And we're going to cure it today in a bit of, bit of salt, sugar, and some vanilla then. So two parts, two parts sugar, one part salt, and just a little bit of vanilla bean. We're going to scrape out, cut down the center. And scrape out the beans. So beans are going to be most of the flavor. If, you, uh, if you're going to use fresh vanilla beans at home, try, don't throw away the, uh, the actual shell, the, uh, the pod. Put the pod in, um, Put the pot in a bit of uh, sugar, in a container of sugar, and that way you, you're not going to waste the uh, waste the pot, and you're going to get a nice, uh, nice strong vanilla sugar. So if you ever want to make coffee with uh, coffee with um, your vanilla sugar, and we're just going to cover that. So the salt and the sugar. It's going to start to draw some of the moisture out of the crocodile and it's going to start to impart flavour into the tenderloin. And you'd seal that. Uh, so you'd, you'd uh, seal it and then put that in the fridge for about 24 hours. So we're going to do that. Yeah. So now that we've got that curing, our next step, next step after curing that would be to put it in a temperature control water bath. Uh, we cook crocodile at 57 degrees uh, for 60 minutes. Um, so it's in a cryovac bag. And then we put it, put it in the water bath and that goes, that goes on uh, and it sets all the proteins inside. So it's nice and, uh, so it's nice and firm uh, and cooked perfectly. We would then sear it on a pan just to get the caramelization of the sugar uh, and the vanilla starting to come out and to warm it through. So we're going, going to do that in a minute. While we're waiting for that, we're going to start making, making the um, the puree, which is we're going to caramelise some onions. You want to get nice and thin, but you don't have to be too concerned. Chop, chop, chop it. Sugar and a touch of oil. We're going to put that and caramelise that on the stove. That's going to cook for about about five to ten minutes on a low heat. Once you once you start sweating that off, that's going to cook for about uh, about five minutes or so to get the caramelised uh, caramelised texture and uh, flavour. Once we do that, we're just going to cook some, cut some pears up. Just leaving the pool. And then just roughly yeah. chopping up the pears. So, through the magic of TV, it's been five minutes. 
and we're going to throw the pears in. We're going to sweat that off and just get a little bit of uh, a little bit of colour into the uh, into the pears. And we're going to put a splash of white wine, which they've drunk. Tasty. So I've got yeah. some That's just going to put a little bit of moisture in. So when that's when that's cooked through and it's nice and soft, then we're going to blend that in in blender. So turning that down a little low, so it cooks out nice and slowly, and the natural sugars of the pears and the uh, and the onions start to come out, as well as that extra little bit of sugar. So next, we're going to make a celery act and a baby fennel remoulade. So a celeriac is a mix between a parsnip and a celery. It has, uh, it's a root vegetable that has flavours of uh, <coughs> celery in it. Shut the door again. Looking good. So we're just going to julienne, which is just a matchstick cup. put a little bit of salt on this. This is going to start to draw out the uh, moisture of the celeriac um, and it's going to soften the celeriac up. So, and that just needs a couple of minutes. While we're doing that, we're just going to get some baby fennel. And again, nice and thin. too much flavour. Every time we, we take a bite, we're not getting too much flavour of each ingredient. So, then we're going to make, we've got a little bit of aioli and some creme fraiche, a touch of salt, some cracked pepper, you can put in a touch of lemon juice if you want to, and we've got some shervil. Chervils just to add a little bit of colour. It's a fairly neutral flavour. So you're not going to change the flavour of the fennel and the celery. It's already starting to soften up, and we're going to start getting some more okay, right. What we're going to do now is just rinse it off to get that extra bit of salt off. Push it down, bro. Squeeze it to get most of the moisture out. still take more moisture out and that's going to actually start to make your, ma your uh, mix quite wet and it's going to run all over your plate when you present it. Going to mix that around. And 
and we're going to let that sit. Flavour is going to develop out of that, and some of the moisture is going to make it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more pliable. So, for now, we're just going to, we're just going to let our uh, caramelised onion puree simmer for a little while, and then we're going to blend it, and we're going to let the crocodile uh, cook in the sous vide machine. Tasty. Vegas Rhythm Kicks formed in 2010. Oh, basically we wanted to sort of get some of our zombie pillars out there and uh, we started jamming on some tracks and uh, some things that were close to our zombie hearts. Basically, uh, we put out our tape of Maca Pinata later in the year and uh, started making pro clips and it's just gone up and up from that. Pinata was released in 2010. Uh, we released this Creepy Dad, our second album, in August of 2012. And um, I'm currently writing some new material at the moment. Uh, we've got an album we're expecting now about towards the end of this year, starting next year, called uh, Necromance. Uh, the writing process for us is a pretty straightforward kind of thing. Basically, I'll write all of the, uh, the tracks and show it to the other guys and run it past our producer. And uh, from there, we'll sort of start sitting down with the song models and uh, putting the drums to it and uh, working it out as we go. But uh, it's a pretty straightforward sort of process. Uh, no, I don't really write with a live setting of mine because I'm dead. Street metal scene over here in Brisbane is fantastic, and uh, Australia in general has an extra metal scene, it's just fantastic. And uh, if I have to talk about local bands, uh, I can't let this moment go by without giving a shout out to fellow bands Malachi, check them out. Also, one of my favorite all time bands, Laceration Mantra, and another new brutal band on the Brisbane scene, Universe, check them out. <laughs> Before we hit the stage, we usually like to have a glass of scotch from the Dead Ogre's Crotch. Oh, uh, we don't have any touring plans at the moment. I think the other two guys are going to be checking into rehab as soon as we record this new album. I'm not really allowed to talk about that until uh, after the court case settles. My solicitor said that we, uh, yeah, we can't talk about anything. Uh, when we're not touring or writing albums, we just hang out in the crypts and, um, yeah, I think Bones had a gig at McDonald's, but, um, ooh, that ended badly. Nude bitches of B. Arthur. I am a superhero, a motherfucking Randy Ranson, the zombie metal king. Oh, if I was on a desert island with three discs, um, I'd have to take our first album, Maggot Pinata. Um, definitely have to take uh, Spiritual Healing by Death. And uh, probably um, Iron Maiden's first album, Iron Maiden. We have no culinary training, that's why we've got Brian doing the cooking. Basically, next thing for us is uh, we're, we're uh, writing the new album, but we're gonna uh, keep working on that. Make a whole bunch of some fucking sick film clips to go with it, so uh, stay tuned to www.thevrk.com. Hey, we're back, it's been 60 minutes, and, um, 
Yeah, as you can see over there, Bones has had a little bit too much to drink, and he's having a bit of a, a bit of a rest. So, um, I'll kick back over to you, Brian. Alrighty, well, uh, we'll see what we can do working in such a mess. Um, so, first off, uh, it's been about, been about an hour. Uh, the crocodile has been suing for the first 60 minutes, like we said. Uh, so now we're going to uh, now we're going to get one, uh, and we're going to seal it off, uh, and so it's going to have the natural caramelisation, uh, and then we're going to slice it up. Uh, the remoulade has sat for a little while, so that's the the moisture has started to come out, so it's a little bit more pliable. Uh, and we've also blended blended our caramelised onion and pear puree, uh, so that's ready to go. So we're just going to seal it off, warm the crocodile up. You don't want to serve the crocodile too too warm. If you undercook crocodile, it's really chewy. Uh, if you overcook it, it's really chewy and dry and, uh, and too strong. So, alrighty. So, just a touch of olive oil. So just a touch of olive oil, and we're going to get the oil up to a smoking point. So where the olive oil just starts to smoke is the best point of sealing meat off in a pan. You don't need to season your crocodile, because you've already had salt and sugar and the vanilla in there, so it's already going to have the flavour imparted in. So that's part of the curing process, uh, to impart flavour and to uh, and to tighten up the, tighten up the meat and uh, draw some of the excess moisture out. So we're just about ready. We used uh, we we previously seared this one, so you get a little bit of flavouring, just with that tip. And then you put it in the oven for about two to three minutes. Uh, we've already previously done uh, just to warm it through in the centre. In an oven at uh, on a medium heat, 180 degrees Celsius, which I think is about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, it's still nice and pink inside, uh, but that's just the colour of the crocodile doesn't mean it's undercooked, that just is the, is the colour. One tenderloin will weigh um, a couple of hundred grams, depending on the size of the crocodile. Uh, these are two-year-old crocodiles that are farmed in cans. So we'll serve serve two two and a half people as a as a small meal. We're just going to fan that out and let the excess little bit of moisture come out on the uh, paper towel. Just a touch of uh, shovel for garnish. And there we are. Vanilla cured crocodile. 
with a celery and fennel remoulade and a caramelized onion and pear puree.